Hi everyone, Zach Rowe here again with another video for Ruggiero Piano. Today I'll be discussing a question that I know a lot of piano enthusiasts have thought at least once in their piano career. What really is the difference between a grand and an upright piano? How do they work and how are they different? Are upright pianos really just a space saving measure? Do grand pianos really play and sound better? Let's get to the bottom of these questions with our own investigation. First off, it's important to understand that there are different use cases for both grand and upright pianos. It should come as no surprise, but these two piano types vary widely in size and cost. As a general rule, a grand piano will be larger and more expensive, while with some exceptions, an upright will have a smaller footprint and cost less. You might be asking yourself, why would I spend money on a grand piano when an upright is less expensive and doesn't take up my whole living room? Well, the grand piano and especially the grand piano action are considered the ideal for most discerning pianists. You are able to play more quickly and quietly on a grand piano thanks to its longer key length and double escapement, but more on that later. That isn't to say upright pianos don't have their time and place in the sun. They are a great option for anyone with limited space or someone simply looking for a smaller instrument. Let's take a closer look at both of the piano's grand and upright form factors. If you know your piano history, you'll know that upright pianos came second after its bigger brother, the grand. From spinets to consoles and consoles to studios, you have historically been able to purchase an upright piano ranging from 40 to 52 inches tall. Digital pianos have taken away a large market share from small entry-level upright pianos as they are always in tune and regulation, but that is a topic for another video. Back to size. In the piano world, bigger is in fact better. Like a longer piano, a taller upright piano from a reputable manufacturer will yield a more powerful and rich tone, especially in the bass as the string length is longer and overall the soundboard area increases. You may have heard the term escapement used when describing the articulation of a piano action. In the case of an upright piano, escapement describes the moment when the jack escapes out from underneath the hammer butt. This occurs near the bottom of the keystroke and can be felt as a slight resistance to the player. Discerning pianists look for the escapement event because it is the last moment of control the player has over the hammer before it strikes the string. The pedal functions of an upright often differ from that of a grand. The right pedal is always the sustain or damper pedal, and the left pedal is nearly always the soft pedal. The differences occur often when it comes to the middle pedal. On a grand, the middle pedal is usually a sostenuto pedal and sustains only the notes that are first played. This is used mainly in classical repertoire and so usually only a manufacturer's best would include this feature. Otherwise, its use is to allow for extremely quiet playing when practicing. On this particular upright, the Yamaha YUS5, the middle pedal is actually a true sostenuto which is fairly uncommon for an upright. Finally, let's take a look at the way an upright piano produces sound after the hammer has imparted its energy into the string. After being struck by the hammer, the string vibrates and transfers its energy to the bridge, which it's tightly strung over. Each string is tensioned with approximately 150 pounds of force. The bridge then conducts this energy to the spruce soundboard, which itself vibrates and produces the tone we all know and love. Now we move on to the grand piano. For the purposes of this video, we will define a baby grand as any grand that is up to around five and a half feet long. Anything longer is simply a grand. There are other names such as parlor or chamber grand, but for simplicity's sake, we at Ruggiero Piano like to refer to pianos either by their length or height. Making this even easier is the fact that many European grands have their length in centimeters as their model number. For example, the Bosendorfer 225 is 225 centimeters or seven feet, four inches long. With the grand piano action and keyboard assembly removed, we can now see the hammers actuating. You'll notice that the hammer, whippen, and damper assembly are all parallel to the floor in a grand. The knock-on advantage of this arrangement is that the entire action assembly is reset by gravity after a keystroke, and doesn't require the use of extra springs as is the case with many upright models. As I mentioned before, you may already be familiar with the term escapement, and how it pertains to the speed of the resetting and repetition of a key. A grand piano action has what is called double escapement. This is the feature that allows for more rapid and dynamic playing by the pianist. Let's investigate the double escapement events a little more closely. The first escapement occurs when the repetition lever comes into contact with the drop screw. The second escapement occurs when the jack pushes the hammer towards the string and clears the knuckle with an extra amount of safety factor called aftertouch. 
In simpler terms, double escapement allows the grand piano action mechanism to reset sooner upon releasing the key than an upright piano with only single escapement. You can see how this feature would be hugely beneficial when playing fast and complex passages. Moving on. If you've never played a piano before, you may have wondered to yourself what the three pedals do. On a grand piano, the layout is nearly always the same. The right pedal is the sustain, or damper pedal. This pedal raises and lowers the dampers that mute and unmute the strings. The middle pedal is called the sostenuto pedal. This pedal only sustains the notes that are played prior to it being depressed. Finally, the left pedal is the soft, or una corda pedal. This pedal shifts the entire action to the right underneath your fingers. The effect is lower volume, and in some cases, a softer tonal quality. Like the upright, a grand piano's strings conduct the energy imparted to them by the hammer to the bridge that runs the length of the soundboard. The strings exert a positive downbearing on the bridge to the tune of 15 to 25 tons of pressure. Grand pianos of a certain size have much more available soundboard area and string length to produce a more powerful tone than even the largest upright piano. The Grand also has the added advantage of a wider opening for its lid, as sound is directed from above and below the soundboard. An upright piano requires a reflective boundary like a wall to send most of its power back to the pianist. Whether you choose an upright or a grand piano, it is important to consider your situation and what you want to achieve in the short and long term. To ease the decision making process, at Regera Piano we offer a 10 year full trade up policy for all of our acoustic instruments. The piano you upgrade to must be twice the original purchase price to qualify. We offer this trade up policy because you will grow as a pianist and we want you to have peace of mind about your purchase. As always, we appreciate you watching this video, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'm Zach Rowe with the Ruggiero Piano. Until next time.